Welcome to the Pastor's Study, a program designed to help you answer your questions. You can call, email, or text your questions to us, and our panel of pastors will give you answers from the Word of God. What is God's will? What happens when you die? Does God really care about me? If you have questions like these, then pull up a chair and join us in the Pastor's Study. Hello, greetings and God bless you. Welcome to the Pastor's Study. I'm Bishop Manuel Grady. I'll be your host this evening for this wonderful broadcast that has the opportunity for you to call your questions in, to email your questions in, and my wonderful team and partners that are with me tonight, these great men of God, will help us to biblically answer your questions. You can call your questions in to 774-258-4727. Or go to our website, www.gtvnetwork.us. Also, we're on Facebook. If you're watching us on Facebook, you can also send your questions in that way. And tonight we're dealing with a very, very critical topic, and it's national healing. Um, the events of this week, as this program is being aired, have upset not just the nation, but the world. And the United States, being for so many years such a powerful nation, when we talk about national healing, we're really also talking about world healing. And we're not so arrogant to think that as go America, so goes the world. We know the world's much larger than just America, but we are a central partner and player on this globe and on this international stage. And so tonight, we want to discuss from a biblical perspective what it is that we can do as believers, as Christians, as those that are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We have dual citizenship. We are actually citizens of the kingdom of heaven, and we are aliens, as the Bible would call us, in a strange land, because what we are living in and the world system we're living in was never designed by God, but he has imposed the church upon it to express the kingdom. So tonight, that's exactly what we're going to discuss. What can we do from a kingdom perspective that's going to help heal this world? Right now, I want to go to my panel and introduce and start with my good friend, Bishop Rice. Hey, uh, I am Harvey Chip Rice. I am the pastor of Maranatha Fellowship in High Point, <coughs> North Carolina, uh, on the campus of Communion Point, and it is a pleasure to be with you on tonight. Amen. Hello, I'm uh, Bishop Aaron Powers, the senior pastor of the Breakthrough Community <coughs> Church of God in Mebbin, North Carolina, along with my wife Stephanie and our three boys. and. Uh, if you're ever in the area in Mebbin and you don't have a home church or if we're having revival and you'd like to come and visit, we're located at 703 South 3rd Street, Mebbin, North Carolina, 27302. And I'm David White. I'm the pastor of the Gathering Church in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. And again, I'm Bishop Manuel Grady, and I'm the senior pastor of Life Lifters Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. Presently, we're meeting virtually on YouTube and on Facebook. All you need to do is Google Life Lifters Church, and it'll pop up, and you can join us there on Sunday mornings. We appreciate that. Gentlemen, as the Bible says, and as we've so many times over um, this year, dealing with COVID and dealing with the election, we have quoted, and we understand the importance of, um, of Second Chronicles. Yeah. And... Verse 714 that we all know, if my people, which you call by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will hear and, and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and will heal their land. And so this is one of the most critical scriptures where we see healing um, attributed to the nation because we know land is not just the crops and, and right. those particular things. It's representative uh, of nations. And we have a God who so loved the world. He's a God of nations. And, and it would be God's will that the nations will live and work together. What I, what I want to do first as we introduce this topic, I just want to go around and first set the stage by saying for those that may be watching this at a different week or a different time, that um, exactly seven days ago, um, we had our capital invaded with, with riotous disobedience. And while we're a wonderful nation of free speech and we have the right to assemble, the right to religion, the right to speak, we do have a responsibility to each other as citizens to, to do that equitably. And um, this was something our nation has not seen since 1812 when our government structure was burned to the ground. And so it has shaken us in a way that none of us in generations have not seen. And I just want your input and, and your worldview on what has happened in America this week? Um, I'd have to say that uh, it was, without question, one of the most significant events of my lifetime. There are some things that have happened in 
<clears throat> in my generation, in my life that have been uh, cataclysmic that have happened in the United States. Um, what recently comes to mind is the uh, the attack on the uh, on the towers in New York. Uh, you think about the uh, the the wars, the Desert Storm wars that came from that. This was, without question, one of the most mind blowing events that I've ever seen in American history concerning my life. Now, I know that there are things that have happened that people would say that, well, you weren't here for World War One or Two to see what was going on there, but in our generation, it was it was it was mind blowing because uh, it continued to show the heart of of people uh, when they decide that something is right or wrong, they're going to uh, forward their agenda, and um, and I think that God is showing America its heart. God is showing us on so many levels who we are, and mm -hmm. we need to pay attention to it and figure out what we're going to do uh, as a country. And Bishop, as one here that is the father of small children, um, and you have that unimitable position, perhaps, of having to explain world issues to children who just can't grasp it, but they can see the television and things like that. How has it impacted your family and your church? Well, frankly, I've had to explain to my children that this kind of behavior is unacceptable from any political party. Mm -hmm. It's unacceptable from uh, the standpoint of there's no, there was no reason for it, just like there's no reason for burning down um, businesses. Right. There's no, there's no, there was no good that could come from going into the Capitol in the way that it was, um, frankly, trespassed against. Right. Um, there was no good that could come out of it, and all it did was get people killed yeah. and arrested. Um, same thing again with burning down businesses. Uh, when Republicans do it, it's inappropriate. When Democrats do it, it's inappropriate. Um, this is not a Christian response. If those were Christian people that were doing that, if they claimed to be Christian, this is not an appropriate Christian response. Um, we, uh, in my personal opinion, are to let Christ raise up and put down. Uh, we simply exercise our rights at the voting booth. And when that does or does not go our way, God is still in control. No matter whose candidate wins or whose candidate loses, we still serve a God that sits high and looks low. And I had to explain to my children, appropriate behavior does not matter about age, political party, color of skin. Appropriate behavior comes from obeying God's word and immorality, uh, peacefully doing our best to stand up for what is right. And, and, and Pastor White, you and I are probably the only ones in this panel that have real cognitive memories of riots of the 60s. I remember being in school and my teacher saying our hearts are heavy because Dr. King was killed and JFK, I was too young to understand um, um, President Kennedy, but you know, um, Robert Kennedy was killed. And, and this is, this maximizes that in so much of a way, in, in, a, in a different way because those things happen in a fight for rights, civil rights, not because, you know, something didn't break our way. And, uh, and, and my question to you is, if you saw this, as Bishop said, what do we say to um, believers when these elements of, of, of this riot has Jesus saved and, you know, Christian proclamations, but yet in this environment like Bishop Powers raised? It was very unfortunate. I think it was also just a, another part of what's been happening in our country. Our cities have been burned. Many policemen have been shot and killed. Mm -hmm. It's just a continuation of a nation that's, that's strayed away from God. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible clearly says that uh, righteousness exalts a nation. Yes. But yes. sin is a reproach to any people. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, Hosea says, come, let us return to the Lord. Right. For he is torn, but he will heal us. And uh, to me, it was just another evidence of the heart of our nation that has departed from God. And, you know, I, I, I have to, it was, a, it was really mind-boggling to me, the 117th Congress opened mm. with an ungodly prayer to the gods of many worlds, and they ended their prayer by saying, amen and a woman. 
And it was just right after that that we saw this assault on Congress. Yeah. And I wonder if, if a door wasn't open wow, to wow, wickedness wow. and evil because our Congress called basically upon Baal rather than the Lord God. And when you do that, you pay the consequences. The wages of sin brings death. And that's a unique observation that I've not heard anyone raise, you know, on any side. I heard the memes that a woman's, you know, that's just ignorance, you know, they think mm -hmm. it's gender, and we know it's not. Um, but, 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 Dr. Rice, what is the progress towards, we're talking about healing, um, just like if someone is in the hospital with a natural ailment, there's a progression to healing. There are steps that need to be taken. There are people, nurses, doctors, in that metaphor, that need to contribute to healing. What are the steps, gentlemen, that we're going to have to take before we can even say healing can occur? Um, I think that we have to first uh, begin to acknowledge who needs the healing. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at scripture, I look at uh, scriptures that say things like man is going to wax worse and worse. I look at uh, how that the hearts of men are going to continue to be dark and they're going to continue. And so we're leading up to the culmination of the coming of Christ and uh, the reconciliation that he's going to bring about. Um, but when I look at America, I don't know that America wants to be healed because when you're sick, you have to acknowledge that <coughs> you're sick. Other people can see that you're sick, yeah. but the only way yeah. you're going to get healing is if you acknowledge that there is a problem. That's step we, one. We as men are probably worse about this because we, you know, something happens to us and, you know, I'm a man, you know, I got it, you mm -hmm. know, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be all right. And then a few weeks later, you know, you get ready to die because you never acknowledged that there Absolutely. was a problem. Right. And so acknowledgement is the key to, to the healing process because if you will not acknowledge systemic racism, if mm -hmm. you will not acknowledge economic disparity, if you will not acknowledge uh, uh, what's going on as far as gender equality, and not necessarily uh, from a church standpoint saying, uh, you know, different sexual preferences, but if you're unwilling to acknowledge that limited health care, limited education, mm -hmm. the things that are going on in people's lives, people um, are just going to keep doing what they're doing. Absolutely. I would say that where the healing is needed most is probably in the church. Yeah. And maybe we'll flesh that out uh, mm -hmm. as we continue to talk. But, mm -hmm. but if this country will not acknowledge it needs healing, mm -hmm. uh, arrogance and pride yeah. have taken over the United States. And so, Bishop, right there, the first, the, the first um, uh, requirement, if my people, you said in the church, Okay, so before we can talk about healing from the world, let's just go ahead and piggyback on that. The Lord said to himself, if my people, and then back to your point, still, the same point supply, you got to acknowledge it, which is humble yourself. Right. So take us from there and what we should do to affect healing in the church and f before we can affect healing from the church. Yeah, that's a great point. There's a lot of people who are calling out for healing but have not yet humbled. Right. They want the healer without the humbling experience. They want to get the benefits and the blessings without mm -hmm. the bended knee. Um, and it just doesn't work that way. I know that Isaiah 60 says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. Uh, Isaiah 61 and 2. Uh, Rise, shine, for thy light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen <coughs> upon thee. I know that it says that, but that is for a group of people that have already humbled themselves and begin to pray and have turned from their wicked ways. And, in the, and, and what, what happens there? In verse 2 it says, Behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Until we humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways, seek the face of God, not just the hand of God, asking God for who to know him as he is, not just for what he can do for us, like spoiled brat kids uh, that are trying to get more and more from daddy and mama, but not willing to put in the the, uh, the uh, knee mail uh, with God, um, then the glory's not going to shine upon us. When the glory begins to shine, we are in a place, and I believe that, the, that everyone on this panel would agree that we are in a place where a church on fire for God right now could do great exploits for God and could really grow and could grow the church. Uh, however, it's not going to happen with people who are doing 
malicious things in the name of Christ. Frankly, uh, it's happened many, many times over the years that people have done horrendous things in the name of Christ, but it's never been in line with the words of Christ. Come on. And so we have to remember that it is God who raises up kings and priests and, and potentates and presidents, not really even the will of man puts one in, but the will of God who raises up vessels of honor or dishonor. It makes no difference. It is God who raises up. Therefore, what are we doing if God puts somebody in the office of president, if we are maliciously coming against that person, we're coming against God's chosen person for this hour. It doesn't matter who they are. Right. For us to say, not my president, is absolutely ridiculous if you're a citizen of the United States, whether you like them or not. It's, it's just ridiculous. We need to uh, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt us in due time. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. We have a caller online with a question. Thank you for calling in this evening to the pastor's study. Go ahead with your question, please. Hey, thank you. I wanted to ask, in terms of being a believer and everything that's going on right now, how can we facilitate healing with um, people um, that we talk with on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when we're working with people that are worldly already? And then when we have the certain situations going on, and for example, with the president, where in some eyes he has um, proclaimed himself to be a believer, and then with some of his actions, they don't always match up. So when you're talking to others about these things, they bring that up. So how can we facilitate healing with these type of issues going on? Wonderful question. Let's unpack that, um, Pastor David. Um, can you say that to the people? Basically, basically, he's saying, how can we facilitate healing as, as believers, um, like in the workplace and around us when they're questioning the decisions of our presidents, whoever it may be, or the decisions of our candidates that doesn't line up, as he said, with what they claim to believe as Christians, and then we're trying to bring healing in, yeah. but they're looking at the men at the top, whichever it may be, and saying, but, but. Well, I think one thing is we've become politically correct in America rather than biblically correct. Yes, the sir. church is to lift up the standard yes. of truth and righteousness. I heard someone today, they, they sent this to me, it said, honest disunity is better than unity in something dishonest. Wow. And at least half of America believed that there was fraud in the election. Mm -hmm. And I think that where most of the outrage is, they wouldn't even acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And it's like our own lives. We have to acknowledge our sin. Yeah. And the church has to draw the standard of what is sin and what is right and what is honest and what is pure and what is unpure, what is holy from unholy. Mm -hmm. That was the role of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. I think the church, this is an example of the church that lost its saltiness, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. we've become so politically correct yeah. that we've lost sight of the word of God. And that's all through the scripture. That's what happened through Israel over and over and over. They departed from the truth departed. and did their own ways. Let's talk about departed, Dr. Rice, because um, a nation is made up of people. The government of that nation is made up of people. The representatives that we send, whether to the state house or to the to the, to the Congress, it's made up of individual people. That brings character into play. Mm -hmm. I will never forget when, when um, Vice President Gore challenged his election and he felt that it, it was off and things were wrong. And we went through this process and that man stood with character as the president of the Senate, vice president, and he read and accepted and said, God bless George Bush. And, and we so got away from that, where, yeah, I didn't win, my guy didn't win, but God bless America. So, um, standing in a garage doesn't make you a car. Right. And there are a lot of people that say that they're believers, that say that they're Christians, but we look at your life, and you're always known by the fruit, fruit. that you bear. It does fruit. not mean that believers don't make mistakes, it doesn't mean that, that we get out of character sometimes, but... Uh, for the most part, you have to look at somebody's life and that will tell you, um, you know, now you can confess and believe there was a man who was on a cross and he confessed right there on the cross and, and he was uh, and he was redeemed. So but for the most part, as we look at people's lives, we can kind of we'll be able to see what it is that you believe and who you are and what you are. Um, the bigger issue is that we have been enchanted uh, by politics. Okay. Um, and, okay. and, and the worst place for it has been the house of God because 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what God loves is the truth. And, and, and it's controversial, but mm -hmm. people can say whatever they want to say. I'm just I'm going to try to bring this to light. When President Obama was elected, uh, there were a lot of people that latched on to him and they latched on to him for a pride because of him being a person of color that came into this office. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we disregarded some of the things that he did as the president because we were so proud of somebody of color ascending mm -hmm. to that office. Right, right. And so <clears throat> he called, he said he was a Christian, um, and but there were some things that he did as far as uh, his uh, presidency that go against what we see as far as the word of God is concerned. Right. Uh, doesn't make him not a, uh, a great man. It just means that, hey, you know, you got some issues just like everybody else does. Mm -hmm. And then when President Trump came into office, <clears throat> he has been touted as a believer, as a Christian. But we also see that there are a lot of things that you've done that are, are not the character of Christ and, and not what we see that you should be as a leader is concerned. The problem is that neither one of their names is Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on, sir. Mm -hmm. And we have spent all of this time, mm -hmm. effort, getting on our political bandwagons. Mm -hmm. There are people that are saying that, that, that if you're a Democrat, you can't be saved. Oh, my God. There are people that are saying that, that all Republicans are racist. Yeah. How in the world did we get the church so deeply entrenched in the foolishness <laughs> of trying to tout a politician mm -hmm. over the Lord Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely ridiculous <laughs> that people have hitched their wagons to a Trump or an Obama or a Gore mm -hmm. or a Carter or a Bush or anybody mm -hmm. else. We have to understand yeah. these people are in office to lead this country, but when you are a believer that you live in a theocracy, mm -hmm. and it is ridiculous that we are, are, are pushing forward people who are in political office, and now the church is endorsing them as to say, well, yeah, this is the guy or this right. is the guy. Mm -hmm. no, I got to come back and body No, work. no, you can't hitch your wagon to that. No, That's no, a no. wonderful point. Yeah. We're going to unpack that some more throughout this conversation. We have a caller online for a question. We appreciate you calling in to the show tonight. Go ahead with your question. Hi, good evening. I would just like to know, was everyone received the blessing and restoring from God this year in 2021? Will everyone receive the blessing and restoration from God this year in 2021, Bishop? Uh, no. <laughs> right. No, because some don't want it. And God is a gentleman, and God will never force anything on you that you don't want. But to those who, and to some who want restoration as far as complete restoration and going back and doing what we did before the pandemic hit, maybe not. Uh, because the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. Will some mm -hmm. receive full restoration? Absolutely. Um, as for me, I look at it this way, and please don't think I'm being cynical when I say this. Some will, some won't. So what? God's still God. I'm not trying to be cynical. If God never gives me back everything I lost in 2020, he's still God, and I'm still his servant, and I still love God. Mm -hmm. If God never does another single solitary thing for me in my life, salvation was enough for me to love him and serve him forever. Yeah. And also enough for me to love my brothers and sisters yeah. and serve them. Mm -hmm. Because as a minister of the gospel, I am called to be a servant. Mm -hmm. I told our church last Sunday, I am, a, I am the head servant. Right. I am the maitre d', if you will. Yeah. Um, let me say this. Uh, uh, in connection with this question and the, the, the previous question. The problem is with the church about us hitching our wagon to the wrong, uh, the wrong post or the wrong uh, mm -hmm. uh, animal to pull our wagon is that we have stopped focusing on Christ and started focusing on people. So much to the point that we have begun to nitpick each other, as the brother was talking about uh, with Republican or Democrat or whatever. Um, 
Last time I checked, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The truth of the matter is we're all going to see, we all have differences. The, the real problem is that some people are really good at hiding their pet sins while some are not. <laughs> um, if all I ever see is racism, I might need to check myself because I may be one. Mm. If all I ever see is somebody is wrong because of their politics, I might need to check myself because I may be one of those that's wrong because of my politics. For sure and for certain, I am not a racist, and I don't care if you're a uh, Republican or Democrat. I'm going to love you anyway. Um, but people, some people are really good at hiding their true intentions. It's, uh, the people of God have gotten really good at hiding their lies and covering up their backbiting and getting even more people to agree with them what they think is right, to, even though they may be dead wrong because they have fixed to some faux political pull and a clique or, uh, that they're creating because they want the church or they want the world to be like them to be ran their way instead of the vision that God has given a pastor or the vision that God has given someone to lead this country and, 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 and that is idolatry. Amen. Amen. The church has become idolatrous. Pastor David, Samuel with Saul, Dad and Nathan with David. These were voices of the Lord in the church that come hell or high water, right or wrong, spoke the truth of the word to power. So much so that the Lord told Samuel, stop mourning for David. So yes. there's, no, there's no question that he loved his king, and let's just interject his president, or maybe who was in power. Mm -hmm. uh, Nathan, at the sin of Bathsheba, told David, you are that man. Mm -hmm. Could, could. Is that not what we're missing today in our pulpits, as, as Dr. Rice said? You know, we're hitching our wagons to everything, as my brother said, but the truth of this gospel right here. Yes, no, that's, uh, you know, I believe that uh, we have to turn back. Hosea said, let us return to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He has torn, but he will heal. I'm not sure we're going to be able to heal this. I don't think we're going to be able to work it out. I think we could sit around tables and discuss things. I think we're going to need God. I, I, yeah. Sunday, this, this is a scripture. You're yeah. going to, you guys have to preach this. It's Isaiah 63, 19. Listen to what it says, and it speaks of America. It was speaking of Israel in that day. Yeah. It said, we have become like those of old over whom you never ruled by those who were never called by your name. And when I think the world looks at America right now, they would say, wow, you've become as if you never have. Mm -hmm. That God never was your Lord that you claim. Right. But then the next chapter says, oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down. Yeah. We need another, an old-fashioned spiritual awakening. Yeah. Yes. And yes. that can correct a lot of the ills that we mm -hmm. could never correct on our own. And, and it is not cynical to say, it is not um, um, being negative to say that we can do all these little meetings we want to. We, we, we've been trying to heal certain nations and relationships mm. from the Middle East to, the, to Russia to the Soviet Union. It's just the recycled heart of man, as you said, that has not turned back to the Lord. And I, find, I found something interesting this week as there was an uproar about how the big tech companies and social media companies set out to, um, set out to censor. censor people. Yeah. Then I gave it some more thought. And I thought about Genesis 11. And when these people rebelled against God, his decision was to disrupt their communication. Mm -hmm. So it could be that many times, in order to do a greater point, God has to do some things that seem unfair, as you said, um, unfair to us, that's uncomfortable. Nobody wants to be sensitive. We're on this program because of our First Amendment rights. Mm -hmm. But we are men of God that have a responsibility with this thing called the tongue that does what? Sets on fire the course of nature. And there's also a, 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 a rendition, the, the course of nations. And that might be the problem. I'm going to go to a caller right now. We'll yeah. come back to that. Thank you for calling in to the pastor's study. Go ahead with your question, please. Hey, thank you. I wanted to ask concerning this coronavirus uh, vaccine, um, so many people are saying that it's going to um, basically heal us or take care of this issue throughout the nation and the world, but it's been rushed, and it seems like even with certain companies, they're trying to make their people take it. So to me, it seems like in a way it's a, a setup for the Antichrist in a way just because 
in some places they're saying you can't even work or fly on the airplane without it. So I just want your opinion and what do you think about that, and, and is it something that we as believers should even receive ourselves? Thank you, Thank you for your question. Dr. Rice? Um, scripture tells us to watch as well as pray, uh, to kind of watch what's going on. Uh, this, this, we are in unprecedented times. That's it. And so the need to get a virus, um, um, Oh, the word just slipped out vaccine, of my mind. Vaccine. Vaccination. vaccination. Lord, mm -hmm. have mercy. Pray for the preacher. <laughs> the need to get a vaccination is uh, is very much at the forefront of what's going on because this this virus has has the whole world yeah. um, shut down. Um, so it's no different from trying to find a vaccination for smallpox or for Polio. other diseases. Right. You just have to watch and pray. Um, there are so many conspiracy theories out there concerning what this is. Well, it's good. You got you have believers who are doctors saying that it's good, that it's not an issue. You have believers that are doctors are saying, "Don't take this vaccination." Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you say, who do we listen to? What do we do? And so, you have to you have to pray and talk to God and ask Him what is what He wants you to do. Um, I, I can't. I, I don't. I don't think it's smart to openly uh, endorse or condemn uh, the vaccination. There are a lot of different uh, moving parts to it. Well, I think it is sensible to agree that because it, it was done so quickly, yeah. that there are probably going to be some side effects there that uh, that we were unaware of just because of the timing in it. But you know, there, there's a lot of stuff out there. But you gotta you gotta pray. You gotta say, okay, God, what What's going on? What do you want me to do? And then, and trust him with your life. If you take the vaccination, then trust him with your life. If you don't take it, trust him with your life. But, yeah. but I think we got to be very careful when we try to tie everything into the Antichrist. Because if we look at the relevancy of scripture, Antichrist has to keep appearing over and over again. Because the devil does not know when Jesus is going to come back. Mm -hmm. Only God knows that. And mm -hmm. so there have been other people that have been in antichrist situations, but they've not been uh, the one who is going to be the end all. Right. Uh, that, uh, that, that son of perdition, that wicked one. So you, you, the, the devil is everywhere, but so is God. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to be very careful before we start condemning or greatly endorsing this based on spiritual aspects. And, and information is powerful, Bishop, because um, just like that particular, you know, um, potential conspiracy thing and that had grown, has grown out of that, some has come from distrust because of what's been done against certain people in the past Absolutely. causes distrust now. Um, at the, you know, at the same time, we have to be careful, I think, because let's talk about conspiracy, you know, con together, sp spirals to breathe. When you start looking at conspiracies and putting aside the Bible and we're supposed to be believers and taking your information from websites and right. from, from anti this and anti that, it's inevitable that we're gonna get into trouble when we set this aside and then put something else there. Well, that's the absolute truth. One of the things we have to be very careful of as, as believers is that we become so spiritually minded at times we're no earthly good, yeah. or we become so earthly minded at times we're no spiritually good. Um, so, uh, as far as the vaccine's concerned, do what the doctor, what your doctor advises you. To do. We're not medical doctors, so we cannot tell you whether or not to take it, uh, and neither would I uh, tell you whether or not to take it. Well, I take it. If my doctor tells me I need it, I'll listen to them because they know better about medicine than I do. Um, but I will tell you that um, these conspiracy theories, as the brothers have said, there's always been a spirit of antichrist that has arisen over time. And mm -hmm. that spirit of, and Jesus said there are many yep. antichrists. There are many against Christ. Right. Uh, but um, in this last days in which we're living, we are drawing close, I believe, to the revelation of the man, the antichrist. But at the same time, don't be concerned about that. Don't put your faith in looking for an antichrist or don't put your faith in saying, well, when that happens, I know that the end's coming. No, don't worry about that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
the vaccine can't save your, your soul. The vaccine can't save your, your body and your soul to be glorified in heaven with the Lord. It can't. Mm -hmm. It's not a sal salvific work. But Jesus Christ completed that on the cross of Calvary. So look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. And for the joy that was set before him uh, in, endured the cross, despising the shame. But because of the joy, what was the joy? That you and I would be glorified with him. Yes, sir, because if I'm going on a search for someone, I can't go but one place at a time. I'm not going to be searching for the Antichrist. I need to be searching for Christ. <laughs> right, right. Right. I only got right. one, one right. way to go. We have a caller on the line. Thank you so much for calling in to the pastor's study. Go ahead with your question tonight. Grace and peace tonight, Bishop and Pastor Rice, uh, and all the others that's on the platform with you. I, I guess I got a question and a comment because I've been listening. And even through all that we have gone through in 2020, when we look at the church, because I'm going to talk about the church because that's who we are, or my question is, you know, directly toward the church. When we see so much division worldwide, but we see not so much in the church of the living God. So I, I heard the other men of God say, I don't think we can heal, or I may be quoting it wrong, I don't want to do that. I believe that there's a healing for everything. But I also believe that we need, the church needs a healing because we've seen a lot for the church in, the, in, in just the, the, the spirit, the agendas, and the attitudes of the church. And how do we, how do we as the church learn how to agree to disagree and do it godly and don't do it so, I mean, people got so malicious, I mean, even when President Trump was in office, I prayed with, prayed for him. Didn't vote for him, but pray, pray for him because that's what the Bible tells us to do. I don't think God is looking for somebody perfect. I believe that no matter who is in the seat at this point, it had to be a change. And it wouldn't have been allowed if God wouldn't allowed it. So we can't, we can't take things lightly. But, I, I, you know, how do the church heal? How do we learn how to agree to disagree and don't kill one another in our disagreement? Question, that was, that's a lot to unpack right there. But we all, we've, already, we, we've already hit on it. And um, I want us just to go around. I want you to start with you, Pastor White, and just go around and address a question. How do we as a church heal? Yes, well, first I think we should uh, minor on the minors and major on the majors, mm -hmm. and know that God has created every snowflake different. We're going to look at certain things differently, and we should respect on how someone sees something that's not major. Now, if it's major, for example, the blood of Jesus, the cross, then I'm not going to agree. I'm going to tell them, I don't agree with you. I think God's Word says, Jesus died for my sin. But there's some major things that we stand for, and we'll, we may have to die for it. But, uh, but the minors, you know, we need to give people uh, the right to, uh, to be who God made them to be mm -hmm. and, and give them flexibility right. while holding to the standard ourselves. The standard, that's the thing. Bishop Wynn. Well, again, and I quoted this scripture before we even started uh, airing tonight, is Ephesians 4.32. Paul instructs us to be kind, be ye kind, one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Be kind to one another. How will people know that we are God's children? How will we know? How will they know? They'll, they'll know simply because of the good works and they'll glorify the Father in heaven. If they see us being kind to one another, even though we may disagree on political things, mm -hmm. which don't matter, and we agree on the majors, as the brother has said, then, then they're going to see a unified uh, front. And, and remember, uh, Isaiah 51, uh, 17 through 20, I'm going to try to be quick. It says, Awake, awake, <coughs> O stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Uh, thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. There is none to guide her among all the nations. Skip down. It says, Thy sons have fainted and lie at the head of the streets. We are living in a place where the church has rejected <laughs> biblical principles like they were in that time in Isaiah. But if we will just focus on the, I've said it over and over in this program, if we focus on Jesus, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. 
We're having a spirited conversation concerning how we can bring healing to the nation as a church, and we want you to stay right with us. We're going to take a break for a minute. Don't you go anywhere. Be right back. Hey, friend. I'm David Crabtree, lead pastor at Calvary Church, and what a privilege it is to be talking with you today through the auspices of Global Television Network. If you're like me, you want to see the gospel available to people all over the world, and technology today has made it possible for us to literally shake nations. I love the work that Global Television Network is doing, and we need your help and support. You can help us by giving. You can help us by praying with us. Remember, we are Global Television Network, and we're located at 300 North Carolina Highway 68 South. You can write us there, here in Greensboro, North Carolina, at 27409. Or you can text us at 336-575-6577, or on the web, www.g network.us Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're here for you. It's been a pleasure just to meet with you for a minute today. Remember Global Television Network. Amen. And let me add that we also have wonderful production facilities here in the city of High Point. If you want to get in contact with us, make sure you give us a call 336-575-6577 and we may be able to also help you promote or produce your programming and even air it on this wonderful station. So thank you for that. Okay, gentlemen, we are here discussing um, healing and obviously in lieu of the events of last week going into this week, um, we're very concerned in our nation for what may happen over the weekend and what may happen in, in going up into approaching the inauguration. And um, this thing has just been a political blitzkrieg. And I thought about something, Bishop Rice. I thought, I thought, you know what? You and I can argue about the NFL all day long and jostle each other and elbow each other. And I'll be like, Bishop, you crazy. You know good and well your team ain't going to win. And we can, <laughs> we can do that. But when it comes down to this political thing, as you said, we, we can't be kind to one another. And my thought process is because politics affects, of course, our ability to live and our life, and it's so serious. But I, I want to share something with you guys. I remember, uh, I remember the leadership for instance, of David, that obviously like anybody else, everybody probably didn't want David to be the king, you know, like everybody may not want a certain man to be the president or a certain woman to be the president. And David had gone to war and come back and found that the Amalekites in 1 Samuel had taken the wives and the children and the daughters. He prayed first, should I pursue them? The Lord said, of course you go pursue, overtake mm -hmm. them, recover all. He comes back and there's something interesting that's not often preached. There are some that went with him to fight that did not want him to share the spoils with those that did not go to fight. They were too weak to fight or injured to fight. Mm -hmm. and David said, we're not going to do that. And he showed true leadership yep. by even telling the people who were for him that we have to take care of the ones that didn't support me. And I think that's a pristine characteristic of good leadership. And where would they learn that except we teach that in the church from what my brother said? Right. And it's severely lacking. Um, we see there that he had the compassion of people because they were probably so mentally distressed during right. this time that they, they just didn't know how to function. Right. Um, I would, and, and I would say that uh, maybe we need to look to What's, what happened in the book of Acts concerning the uh, believers and, and the Grecian right. uh, people during that time, there was a problem. Mm -hmm. There was a, a problem where people were not being serviced based on their nationality. Mm -hmm. And what we have in the church now is we got a serious problem with us not being able to unite with one another base, base primarily on race. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not even a, a, a conflict in doctrine right. on whether or not you have communion on first Sunday or have it every Sunday. It is race. How many of us can walk into a denomination uh, of a, a church full yeah. of another race of people and feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. And uh, and and what what what, what people are are disenfranchised in America, especially as it pertains to the Christian faith, is that you keep telling me about a God that will save me, a God that will uh, let me go to His heaven, a God that will bless me, but you don't want to be with me. And this God is saying that you're all my children. Right. And so so we keep touting this great God 
that, uh, that says he's our father and we're all family, but I can't spend time with my brother because mm -hmm. you have an issue mm -hmm. with who I am. It is arrogance and it is pride. Come on. Because somehow you believe that because of your upbringing, because of your color, because of your, of your history, it makes you better than another individual. Mm -hmm. Scripture clearly states that there is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, bond nor free, that we're all equal. We have different administrations. We yep. have different things we're supposed to do, but we're all equal. If that is the case, why won't you let me be a part of your fellowship? After the many representations that God has given us in the Bible of his hum homogeneous love, you know, and, and you think about, you said neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, and the people who were his chosen people, let's look at that, came from Abraham, mm -hmm. who lived in Ur the Chaldees, who was a heathen, a sun worshiper, and God put him in the lineage in order to demonstrate to us our unworthiness in the first place. Right. And we get all the way on the side of this, we have problems, you know, in, with the Grecians and, and, and the Jews, and then we get all the way here to 2021, we're still at the same trough. Oh, it's an absolute truth. It was a problem in Paul's day. Yeah, exactly. Paul talked about uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 7, about the problems that the people were having between he and um, Apollos. Mm -hmm. uh, some were arguing that Apollos was greater. Right. Uh, some were arguing that Paul was greater. Mm -hmm. And Paul says in, in, in that scripture, who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So there is neither he that planteth anything, nor he that watereth anything, but God gets the increase. We have to look at ourselves as nothing. I must decrease mm -hmm. so that he can increase. Jesus didn't say if this church be lifted up or if that church be lifted up, this denomination or that denomination or this skin tone or that skin tone be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Jesus became servant of all men. If we're going to be like Jesus then it doesn't matter if we're Jew or Greek or bond or free or male or female or wherever it is, wherever, whatever difference lies, mm -hmm. we will serve one another out of love for each other and love, love for God. Somebody asked, on the, on, asked me when I shared this uh, broadcast on Facebook, they asked me, what are some steps we can take? One, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. That's walking in lockstep with Jesus. Yeah. Two, love your neighbor as yourself. Absolutely. But why, I guess the question for me is, why won't we? Good yeah. question. We, we, we have clear marching orders from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Clear. Why won't we? If, if you look yeah. over the landscape of the American church, God, I'm going to go ahead and, and say what I see. Mm -hmm. We look over the landscape of the American church. We see, we see how scripture was used to, uh, to uh, in slavery. Mm -hmm. In order to get people to uh, to humble themselves and, and stay with your masses, mm -hmm. okay, we got past that. So then we had churches. You 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 want people to be saved. You want them to know Jesus, but you cannot come to this church. Then that started to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you can sit in the balcony, or you can sit outside. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're still talking about the same Jesus now. We're still raising our hands, singing hymns and everything else. Then uh, you, you can't have a church. So now uh, uh, there are people of color had to form their own churches and denominations. Right. So, so okay, we, we started to get past that. And, and then say, you got some brothers and sisters saying, hey, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. We need to come together. But it's easier for a white brother who is a pastor of a church to draw people of color to his ministry and we accept him as a leader and accept him as a pastor and a man of God. But if you ask our white brothers and sisters to come to a black church and sit under anointed black leadership, they're not coming. 
And that's a problem because we are, the pride and the arrogance of man says, there's no way that somebody who doesn't look like me can actually hear from God and have authority or actually do this in a way that God wants it done. Right. And so the healing's got to take place in the church first. We have got to stop this foolishness yeah. of believing somebody's better than the other person just because of my heritage. Yeah. It is ingrained and only pride makes it stay there. It's instilled, it's instilled. We have a caller on the line. Caller, thank you for calling in tonight. Go ahead for your question, please. Hello. I just like to know, what do you say to your brothers and sisters in Christ who have been praying for years and years for their healing of their sicknesses or illnesses, and they still have not received it? Good question, Pastor White. Yeah, you just keep praying. I, I wouldn't give up. Um, you know, I, we just like when you share the gospel with someone, they may not get saved at that very moment. But um, you keep sharing the gospel. And uh, the thing, same thing with healing. You just stand. You trust God. God's the healer. All we're to do is to pray and, uh, and trust him. i got to go back to one thing you, you, you mentioned earlier. Please do. That's kind of foreign to me what you were sharing because I, for some reason, I don't even see that anymore. I grew up mm -hmm. in the South when you, dis you right. discussed it earlier. And I remember the riots and I remember the division. And I remember them sitting up in the balconies. But it's like when I came to Jesus, he took all that away. I mean, old things have become new. All things, old things have passed away. All things become new. I think the enemy's been using race in America because he knows America's like the prize. And if you can uh, cause division, you'll destroy. You divide a people, you will destroy a people. And even the Lord said that a house divided can't stand. Man, there is no, in Christ Jesus, he's neither black nor white. Now, do we either believe that or do we not? I have an African-American pastor coming to my church Sunday. I can't wait. I'm like a little kid with popcorn. I can't wait for him to walk, come and preach to the folks. Mm -hmm. I can't wait because we have black people in our church. It's not a big deal. I would go to a black church. You invite me, I'd be there tomorrow. To me, it's not even an issue. It's been used to create division because if Jesus is who he says he is, then he's changed my heart. And if he's not... We need to get another religion. That may be one of the problems in America. We, may be, we need to really get the real thing. When you get the real thing, you will love your brother. You're going to love one another because mm -hmm. your heart's been changed. The problem is we've got enough religion. We've been inoculated from the real thing in America. And, and, the, and, and, to, the, the, and to that point, Bishop. He's the, you're the minority. Yeah. You're not, you're not the majority. And so it's, not, it, it's no indictment against yeah. you. Mm -hmm. We're just looking at, but I would challenge you. I say, if we all got together and got and jumped in the car on Sunday, well, we can't do it now because of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, we can. There's <laughs> everything going. But I think if we all let's, got, if we all, let's do it. Uh, in 2019, if we had all gotten in the car and rode around in one city and let's say, let's, say, let's go, we're going to go to 10 churches in this city. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's look at the, the, the demographics in these particular churches. And it would be, it would still be extremely separated yeah. from a worship no, standpoint. It would be. You're yeah, right. yeah. And the question is, why? How can but, we but, not? But yeah. but the, the most segregated time in America. It is history. still, and that was said fifty something years ago. And the thing is, gentlemen, we have not. Uh, the church leaders have not had this conversation in full equity. First of all, let's look at let's look at the average city, maybe like Greensboro, and let's say Greensboro, where we are, is in High Point area, is 15% African American, and of course 85%. If it was correct, and we were reflective of a true Christian community, my church should be predominantly white, even though I'm a black leader, because my city is predominantly white. That shows you the dysfunction. But I mm -hmm. can go into a, a, a white-led church, and he can have. 30% African American and exceed the demographic. But you have to be on the other side to yeah, see this the other side. And, yes, and, and coming to healing, this is why I say, Bishop, we, we got to have these com conversations because yes, I, I talk to my yeah. white pastor friends and, and their eyes tear up because they say, I, I just never saw it that way. And I, I, it's, it's like a pyramid. You can only see two sides of a pyramid if you're on the ground. It's devastating because You've had people that have been saying this for years. Yeah, yeah. You, we, we've been saying that this is going on. It, it's it, and people are just like, oh yeah, well, 
okay. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you tell them, okay, go on with your life because I'm not going to address this. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the toughest time getting pastors to acknowledge uh, the systemic racism that is taking place in America. Pastors. Yeah. If nobody else should have the softness of the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ, surely the shepherd mm. should be the one to be able to look at and say, hey, and, and what, what made a lot of people of color upset is that you never acknowledged the systemic racism, but what you did acknowledge is the riots, and you acknowledged uh, Black Lives Matter, and you acknowledged the looting and the things that are going on. Okay, this is a reaction to yeah. some, it's the wrong reaction, but it is a reaction to something. Yeah. Why would you not stop and say, wait a minute, Am I going to let another generation come up in my family in this country and not acknowledge that we have done an absolute uh, disservice mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, demeaning uh, action to people of color? Absolutely. Absolutely. Bishop, quickly. I got to say this. If, if you are racist, you're not saved. <laughs> Period. Man cannot serve two masters and either love one and cling to the other or, or, and, and despise the other or cling to one and reject the other. Man cannot serve two masters. That includes money and God. It includes racism and God. It includes anything that would separate you from God or your brother and sister. How can we say we hate our brother and sister and have the love of God? It does not coexist. It cannot coexist. So therefore, as a Christian person, I have not really ever experienced hating someone else. I, again, as the brothers have said, I really believe them, when, and these brothers, when they say you have to be on the side that's experienced it before you can fully understand it or appreciate that kind of a struggle. Amen. Because I have not experienced it, uh, being hated the, the way some have. Now, right. let me say this now, as far as uh, one side of my family uh, doesn't like the other side of the family, and I have understood that kind of a, of, of a dynamic. But until as a Christian person I've experienced that kind of racism, I don't know what it's like, exactly. frankly. Absolutely. So we should have these kind of conversations. Find someone and have honest and frank conversations. We've had a spirited conversation, and <laughs> it's so much has come out. I hope, it gives yes. you, I hope it gives you pause to look at your own heart. And first of all, if you don't know the Lord, repeat this prayer after me. Father, I believe that you died on the cross of my sin, and I believe that yes, you rose on Jesus. the third day. Yes. And by that belief, I confess with my heart I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart that you are Christ and you are saved. Please pray for our nation. Yes. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching The Pastor's Study. The views expressed by our guests are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of the Global Television Network. If you enjoyed this program, please support the Global Television Network. Send your donations to 300 NC Highway 68 South in Greensboro or you can give online at gtvnetwork.us.